Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today I want to show you how to go from a standard breaker, like the one I'm holding here, the 20 amp breaker is what we're looking at today, to using a ground fault breaker in order to get rid of having to use point of use ground fault outlets, like this one right here that went bad on me. These things are notorious for going bad when they are placed in the outdoors or in places where they are exposed to the weather. This one's technically tamper resistant and weather resistant. You can see WR and TR. Uh, so if I go ahead and press test, nothing happens. Reset, nothing happens. And this thing has actually failed to the point where I am not getting any power out of it. So we could just replace this with a standard ground fault receptacle just like what we are looking at right here but there's a better solution if you replace in this with a standard outlet and install a ground fault breaker then most likely you're gonna have a lot less problems long term by the way if this video helps you out please hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one Hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. Also, all of the parts and accessories that are needed for this project, I will do my best to link in the description. So make sure you check that out as well. This right here is a ground fault circuit interrupter that is built into the breaker that goes inside of the panel. And this one's actually technically dual function, so it's both arc fault and ground fault. So this purple button right here, let's see, the model number of this one is... Uh, Q120DF for dual function, but this is a ground fault breaker. So if we replace the standard breaker that is located right here with this ground fault breaker, or dual function in this case, we are going to be protecting that receptacle the same as if we had a GFCI outlet. We then can use a regular receptacle just like this one, this is not a ground fault receptacle. And you want one that is gonna be weather resistant and have WR stamped in the plastic. I will link in the description to a weather resistant uh, outlet or receptacle just like this one. So I'm gonna use a standard one and that'll be protected by the dual function breaker. We're gonna focus primarily on the installation of the new breaker. And then at the end of the video, we will install the receptacle itself as most of you probably are familiar with that process but we'll start with the breaker. So the first thing we're going to do is just turn off the power right here. If you had a main panel in your basement, this would look quite similar. Uh, I believe this is called a feed through panel because it has feed through lugs on it. <coughs> so we'll turn that off. I've already removed the screws. So we'll pull this down here. And here we can see uh, what we have to work with. Now you have to remember that these top lugs right here are always going to be live. In previous videos, I have worn my ring, but that is not a good idea. So I'm gonna take that off. I also will take off my watch here. So no jewelry. Okay, so right here we have our uh, 20 amp breaker uh, that is currently feeding that receptacle that we just looked at on the other side. So all we have to do to take that out is just get a hold of it and very carefully rock it one direction and then pop it straight out just like that and we still have our one hot wire connected to it now we'll want to find our neutral wire that came from that circuit that's feeding that outlet and that is right down here and it feeds up to this white wire right there so that is the neutral wire that is powering that receptacle that we are replacing so we have to pay attention to that because the main difference between a regular breaker and one that is dual function arc fault or ground fault is that we have a spot both for the neutral and the hot wires right here let me see if you can see that you can see how we have two terminals instead of just one so we need to actually bring that neutral back to the breaker and then we use this neutral wire and attach that into the neutral bus so we'll go ahead and remove the neutral wire feeding that circuit just pull that down here and then we'll remove the hot wire feeding that circuit and the hot wire always goes underneath the gold colored screw so we can see here 
on our new or used in this case uh, dual function breaker that we have a gold screw up here and a white screw down here or silver so the white screw is going to be where the neutral goes so let's just go ahead and, and install these here while the breaker is loose there's that one and then we'll take our hot wire and insert that under the gold screw get these good and snug there is a torque wrench that you can use or a torque screwdriver or something I've heard it described as that so that you can get these screws set to the correct tension every time I'll link one in the description if you are interested and then we have our neutral wire here that we now have coming from the dual function breaker and this is now going to land underneath that screw on the neutral bus and you can always you're only supposed to have one neutral per slot in your neutral bus in your neutral bus and if your neutrals and grounds are are together uh, so you can see how there's a ground wire going here because this is the first point of service after the meter so the grounds and the neutrals are not separated if this if this was a sub panel we would have them separated but anyway uh, if you have ground wires sometimes you can put multiple ground wires underneath one screw so we are ready to snap this guy in but we're going to make sure that it is in the off position which it is and there we go now i should mention that if your panel happens to uh, be one that is compatible with plug-on neutral breakers. The only difference is these rails right here and here will be connected to the neutral bars up on top. And you will not need a breaker with a pigtail like this. So this white wire that we just hooked up into the neutral bus, you will not need that because the breaker itself can connect directly to the neutral through the bars on the plug-on neutral panel. I will link to both this type of breaker with the pigtail which is going to be for most retrofit applications as well as the breaker that works with plug-on neutral panels so let's go replace that receptacle on the other side it is very important that you remove any gfci outlets that you had on that ex on that circuit when you change your breaker over to a dual function or a ground fault breaker a ground fault outlet will not work and it will cause issues so you need to remove whatever ground fault outlets are in the circuit that is now being served by that dual function breaker remove one screw right here and then we can drop this cover out whoa there's something living behind there oh gross wasp nest i guess that's disgusting Oh man. Okay. Well, I'm glad that it was just 30 below zero, so don't have to worry about these being active at the moment. Oh, gross. So in this case, it's a nice and simple change out. We only have wires that are feeding this receptacle. We don't have anything attached to the load terminals. The load terminals are so that you can hook up additional receptacles downstream of this uh, ground fault outlet and this outlet would then protect those uh, from a ground fault situation as well. And if you have, if that is the case, you won't really have to change anything. You'll just attach all the wires, hot, hot, neutral, neutral, to your regular receptacle that we're going to be putting in here in a second. There's our hot wires on this side and our regular on the other. And they're connected together with this little tab in between so you will be providing power to all of your downstream receptacles and they will be protected by the ground fault breaker that we just installed now technically you can install the receptacle in this orientation and that's like the officially best way to do it but i just like them better this way so that's how i'm gonna do it all right on the right hand side here we have our gold terminal so those are going to be the hot terminal 
And so our red wire in this case is the one that's going to be going there. Uh, previously, these were clamped into the uh, GFCI receptacle. So we're going to have to bend little hooks. And you want to make sure you bend them in the direction that the wire will be twisting. So in that case, to the right, just like so. And then the neutral, obviously, is going to be on the other side. So we'll bend that down this way. Okay, that's good. There it is. Nice and tight there. So we should be good to go here. So we'll shove this back in here carefully. Up you go. Everything is hooked up, so we're ready to turn this thing back on and give it a test. So first we're going to go ahead and turn on the main. Just like so. And now we'll turn on this ground fault breaker. So that's on. Now we should be able to just push this test button and it should trip it out. Which it does. So this is working correctly. We now have a ground fault receptacle right back here and it's going to last a lot longer than putting a new one of these in because this breaker here is way more protected and not in the elements as much it's underneath this cover in this panel with this closed it is much less likely to fail so it's a good permanent solution rather than just replacing ground fault receptacles all of the time. So that concludes how to replace a standard breaker with the ground fault breaker and also how to replace the receptacle itself. For those of you who are wondering, these clamps here that you've seen are for my Sense Energy Monitor. I will link one in the description below where you can get a discount on one for being a viewer of my channel. Uh, it's a pretty nice device, gives me the opportunity the ability to monitor uh, energy usage in the house and just kind of keep an eye on things. So in case you were wondering. So if you found this video to be helpful, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos like this one. Hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. Thanks a ton for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one. See ya. It's beautiful out.